Hi folks, in this tutorial we are going to be looking at painting a cold white armour with an emphasis on more volumetric shading rather than recess shade and edge highlight. So grab yourself a cup of tea and let's get started. For our first step we will be coming in with some ghost grey from Vallejo Game Colour. This is a nice cold off-white very similar to Ulthwan grey from Games Workshop. I'll be thinning this down about 50-50 with water to make this a nice thin mix. Here I'm painting it over a very light grey primer. Ideally when painting white you want to paint over the lightest primer you have. If you've got black primer then you'll just have to do more thin coats. The trick with this step is doing lots of very thin layers and eventually you build up to a nice solid smooth white. The trick is to apply some paint, wait for it to dry, and then apply the next layer. And don't get too phased about the fact that you can still see some of your primer through. That's absolutely fine. As long as the paint's not pulling apart on the palette, then you've thinned it correctly. Once the thin coats of the ghost grey have been applied, it should look something like this. I can't remember the exact number, but this I think took four or five thin coats. The next step will be to define the shadows of the armour, and to do this I'll be creating a mix of ghost grey and thawk blue. This is about one third thunderhawk blue to two thirds ghost grey. You want to thin this down slightly more than you normally would, to more of a glaze consistency rather than just thinned paint. If you move the paint on the palette and the pigment starts to separate from the water, then the paint is too thin. You want it just before it gets to that point. There's no real science of an exact ratio and the paint will vary time to time, so have a bit of a play. You can always play on the palette. So the technique that we'll be doing here will be to take our thinned mix of our shadow colour and to move it into the recessed areas and the shadowed areas of the armour. Imagine there is a light shining from the top of the model. Where the light would hit first, that's where we want our brightest points. So anything at a recess or the bottom of a rounded surface, that's where we want to put the paint. And this, this colour is a very subtle tint, so it's very easy for us to build this up in layers. So don't worry if you haven't got a stark difference in colour on your first pass, because that's what we want. We don't want a very stark colour change like you'd get if you did a pin wash. What we're looking for is a subtle colour gradient that we can build up with multiple passes. The thinner this is, the smoother this is going to go on. And this is just a matter of having a play. Um, and there is no right or wrong answer to where you put the shadows. If you have the light shining from the top, then it would go into the darkest points. But you can change this up to make areas of the model more pronounced or to stand out. It is entirely up to you. But generally aiming for shadowed areas or the bottom of panels, such as this head stripe here, painting it towards the back where it's hidden by the power pack is a good idea of where to put this shadow colour. After the first pass it should look something like this and as you can see this is quite a subtle change. After a couple of coats of our shadow tone, the white armour should be looking something like this. As you can see, it's starting to provide some nice definition to the armour shapes. To refine the shadowed areas further, what we need to do is to take our mid-tone off-white, in this case the ghost grey, thin it down more than we did for our initial pass, similar to what we did with our 2 to 1 mix for our shadow colour and to layer it back over the raised surfaces and along the prominent detail of the armour panels. What this repass will allow us to do 
is allow us to feather and soften out the edges between our mid-tone off-white and the cold blue shadow tones on the armour. And this is done to taste, so apply as much or as little as you want. If you like the initial look from the shadow tone, then you can skip this step. The final step in our white armour is to come in with a pure white colour. You can use any pure white that you'd like. I'm using white from Scale Colour because I really like its matte finish and how well it blends into other colours. So what we need to do with our pure white is to pick up the very highest points of the armours and the edges that we want to really make stand out. So what I'm doing here is picking up the highlight on the most upward surface of the head stripe and the rounded portions of his helmet. I'm also going to be running the edge of the brush along the side of the respirator vents and across the ear pieces, just to really pick out those hard line definitions. And you can do as much as you want with this, depending on how much of a stark contrast you would like, but this tends to be more of a feathered blending step rather than a straight up edge highlight so really do make sure that your paint is thinned and you do this in several passes and you can always neaten up with your mid-tone if you feel like the contrast you have made is too stark. With some of the other armour details painted in, this white armour is now complete. If you haven't already subscribed, consider doing so for updates on further tutorials just like this one. I hope this helped with your modelling and I'll see you in the next one.